We talked about creating textural overlays using smart objects and the warp command. And where we left off, we were planning where we were going to put our smart objects, and we had sort of drawn the shapes of our form. But as a quick reminder, if you look below the post, you'll find links for free brushes and worksheets, as well as in-depth premium series available in the Control Paint store. So I'm going to look at these and actually create these placeholder images. So for the chassis, it's not really a square, it's more of a tall rectangle, about like that. And I'm going to lock the transparency here just so I can give this a very rough thirds. Okay, that'll just give me some reference points. And then I'm actually going to paint a half down the center. Okay, very beautiful. So now that I've got this image here, I'm going to convert it to a smart object. And now I'm going to use the free transform to put it in place. And I'm going to lower the opacity a little bit just so I can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to right click, do warp, and move these points into place. And here I'm roughly following that guide that I drew on the actual illustration, just to make sure I get my profiles set up correctly here. And if this Using the warp tool is something you're not very used to doing. It just takes a little practice. And you can always adjust this later so you don't have to get it perfect the first time. Okay, so I will hit enter, confirm that. I'm gonna hide my guides for a second here and then bring the opacity back up to 100%. At this point, I also like to apply a mask. So I'm gonna hide the cockpit I don't want to do any overlays on top of the cockpit. Now the mask is totally optional. This is just a way to give myself a little more control. And then make sure to unlink the mask. For reasons I don't fully understand, Photoshop does not like it if they are linked for this process. And now all it takes is double clicking on the smart object and you will have your new document. So as I change the contents of this document, here, I'll just throw something on there real quick just to see if it worked. Hit save, and then it updates in your scene. And at this point, you're probably gonna wanna make some changes to your free transform warp. So you hit Control T for free transform, right click, go to warp, and now you're just gonna make some adjustments to make sure that it is deforming the way you want it to. And perhaps in your mask, you might want to soften this edge so you can't see that harsh cutoff. And now I've officially created the link between my smart object and the contents, which can change to whatever I want it to. Next, I'm going to repeat the process with the wings, although here I've gone ahead and created a little bit of a stronger placeholder image. So my wings are essentially squares and I want two of them. But I'm gonna do the transform twice on the same object, because I actually want the wings to be mirror images of one another. So here I'll convert it to be a smart object, and I'll call it wing A, and then I'll duplicate a copy, and call that wing B. So with wing A, I'm gonna lower the transparency a little bit, do my free transform, confirm it, and then I'll repeat that same process with the other wing. Now, in order to make these mirror properly, I need to make sure that the A's are both touching the chassis and that the C's are on the wing tips. So the whole reason I'm putting alphabet letters on here in the first place is so that I have a bit of a map in order to better visualize where my content is going to be lined up, sort of like a blueprint. So once again, I'm going to add just a little bit of masking so I keep these wings exactly where I want them. And now all I need to do is change the contents. But here's where it's really cool because both wings are actually the same smart object. So when I change one, the other will update as well. 
So I'm going to prove that here just by making a new layer on here with something very visible. So currently, before I save, they both look like they did when I set up my alignment in the first place. But now after adding the blue, I'll save this document. And you see immediately both wings update. And that's really nice if I want to have something that is very obviously mirrored. Like here I put some stripes, which will show up on one end of the wing. And if I look at it and see that I did the wrong side, not a problem. Just move the one part, hit save, and it's updated. Now, of course, you're going to want to change the layer modes maybe to overlay or multiply. This is not the end of the process. But as a matter of getting content wrapped around your image, almost like a vinyl wrap on a car, this process gives you a lot of options. Because once I've set this up the first time, I can change the contents to whatever I want. Each of these options maybe only took me 10 minutes. So if you want to experiment with some pseudo UV unwrapping, a little bit of almost game texturing, give this a try. All you need are smart objects, the warp tool, 